I think without further ado, we ought to just briefly introduce ourselves. I am Dave Caro. I'm a progressive delivery advocate at Split. My job is to talk to people who are using these practices and help others understand how they can adopt them. And I've been with Split for about four years. And it's really exciting to actually go from the idea of progressive delivery and the idea of decoupling deploy from release and the idea of sort of killing the release night to having sort of legions of people that are doing that and who are releasing with kind of less stress, less craziness, um, and, and enjoying the path along the way. So uh, happy to share this stuff with you. Yvonne? Thanks, Dave. Hey, everybody. I'm Ivan Diaz. I lead our solutions engineering team uh, here at Bugsnag. I've also been at Bugsnag for about four years now, started off my career at a telecom building startup as one of the first engineers there. We had tons of bugs, um, learned a lot about bugs in those days. And it's kind of funny that I ended up at a place that's trying to solve those problems. Um, in the four years I've been here, I've been able to learn a lot from a lot of the different customers that we serve. So I think some of the largest names in media and gaming um, and e-commerce, we get to work with all of those customers, learn a lot of things from their diverse backgrounds and, and understand trends that are happening. Progressive delivery is a huge one of them. So we're, we're excited to share this content with you today. Awesome. So on that note, let's fire up the first poll, um, which let's see here. So just want to kind of get a sense of who's joining us today, um, which solutions you're already familiar with, um, um, Split, Bugsnag, or both. Or, hey, if you if you hadn't heard of either before this webinar, you can check that neither until this webinar box. And uh, we'll give a second for a bit of answer here. A um, little better than 50%. Oh, six, we're getting up there in participation. So uh, uh, if you haven't voted yet, get that vote in. We've got a couple more people to kind of round up and then we'll, uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool, interesting mix. Um, so if you look here, um, uh, you can see that, that, uh, you know, uh, people are, are, uh, uh, kind of a mix of, they, they know some of us, they know, uh, uh, both of us and, and even they're new to, um, to boot. So just a quick introduction then for those of you who, who came here by way of maybe being introduced by, by the Bugsnag team or by Atlassian. Uh, Split is a, a, a platform we call the feature data platform that takes the sort of speed of control of feature flags and the ability to ingest event data and to do attribution. So we not only provide the decoupling, deploy, and release that you do in progressive delivery, but really the other half of progressive delivery is limiting the blast radius and learning. And so uh, that is what the whole platform has been built for. And uh, uh, today we're going to see kind of one of the things that happens when you share feature context with another system, which is that we're, we are sharing feature context with Bugsnag. So the Bugsnag can actually help us take action even faster as we're doing progressive delivery. Awesome. And then for the folks who aren't as familiar with Bugsnag, just a quick intro here. Um, we're an application stability management platform. Um, our, we started with error monitoring and we help businesses monitor their applications to get complete error reporting and analytics to help them decide which bugs to fix and how to fix them too. Um, we're doing that for about 95,000 apps. We record over 1 billion crashes per day and we're recording over 10 billion sessions per day as well. Um, so think of if you've ever played Mario Kart, on mobile, if you've ever booked a stay with Airbnb, we're automatically capturing all of the errors that are happening in your experience and notifying those engineering teams so they know exactly what to fix and when. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. I think that the you know I I've been around for a while and it's funny the whole notion of deduplication and and getting to root cause has sort of been the kind of the wave after wave of holy grail um, and. Um, as we were putting this together, it was it was kind of cool how not only it was pretty straightforward to have the errors that were being generated in the scenario be be kind of well managed, but but the obvious integrations to things like Slack and Jira, which we'll see in the demo today, just it reflects a modern world, right? It's not you're not talking about a knock with a bunch of in it, for those who knew a network operating center, a, 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 you know, a, an observation center with a bunch of screens and people staring at it all day. You know, it, it's it's more uh, intuitive for the right team getting notified when they need to know. 
Um, so here's here's what we're going to do today in the talk, and I'm, and I'm calling this talk one of two because um, the split and bug snag uh, integration is bi-directional. So it can actually have split information flow into bug snag, so you know which feature flags uh, were associated with the user that got an error. Um, but also, also the bug snag uh, error data can flow back into split to inform metrics on the split side, so that when you're running an experiment or you're running a gradual rollout, you can actually have metrics being calculated that show how much errors occurred for different um, different sides of, of say, a uh, flag on, off, or ABC, et cetera, right? But today we're gonna focus on the, the flow of data from split to bug snag. And the main goal here is to decrease the mean time to detection and the mean time to resolution, and frankly, to get more sleep. So uh, the whole point here is if, if we don't have to do release nights and if we don't have long running war rooms that, that run through nights and weekends, we can actually kind of have a regular life. And maybe it's not just sleep, maybe it's dinner with a family, right? So uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a real world scenario, which is releasing a handful of features from a particular sprint to support an onboarding flow. And if you're in a, if you're in kind of a high volume business, onboarding new customers is pretty important. And you might always be kind of trying to make that experience a little better. And that's what we're going to talk about as sort of a handful of features that are relating to the onboarding flow for this app. Um, the simulation part of this, I mean, totally transparent. I have a hundred users that are going to run on my laptop. And anybody who gets one of these new features, which we'll see in a minute, is going to have a bad experience, right? That part is a simulation, which is that I'm, I'm running them kind of in a loop on my laptop. Uh, I, we chose 100 so that we could show a percentage rollout. And you know, imagine though this is 10,000 or 100,000, depending on your business, right? And we're going to see how quickly the whole rest of this is not a simulation. So everything else is off the shelf, uh, generally available software. This isn't sort of a... Um, uh, Rube Goldberg thing with with some kind of uh, uh, cleverly hacked together bit. This is all we're using kind of off the shelf features of, of the products involved. So we'll start in Jira. We have an epic you know sprint to organize the work, and each of those pieces of work is associated with the feature flags that are related to them. So it's straightforward to understand what what's related to what. And then we'll do a five percent rollout using the real time control of feature flags, so we can control which users get features in in an instant. And so uh, when we turn on 5% of the users, that 100 users on my laptop are all gonna get the on, they're gonna get the on experience of a new feature and those people are gonna have a little issue. Um, we'll see that we can have instantaneous detection of errors and more important, automated alerts to the right team. So not only do we detect the errors right away, but the alerts and the workflows and the related items are gonna happen to the right team right away in real time, right? There's no, let's start a war room, let's have a conversation about what's happening. It's just boom. And it'll literally take a second to perform the informed triage. So the bug snag side will actually be a great environment to see what's happening as it's happening and to kind of confirm what's what seems to be the root cause and then take an action. Um, we'll then see instantaneous pain relief via kill switch. So one of the keys to progressive delivery is if you're not, if you're using uh, the, the kind of the power feature flags to de de couple deploy from release. Uh, not only can you roll things out whenever you want, but you can turn them off instantly without having to revert, without having to push new software, without having to change server routing, et cetera. It's pretty straightforward, right? And then once we've taken the pain away but with the kill switch, we can do some low testing, sorry, low pressure testing in production to identify what's really going on and make sure it's really fixed. And so the dev team will be able to actually test in production after while well, this incident had happened, but no users are being affected anymore. And then we'll roll it out to everybody once the underlying issue is addressed. And throughout all of this, there's bi-directional syncs going on with Split and Jira and Bugsnag that keeps everybody on the same page. So uh, I think without further ado, as promised, we should, we should jump into the demo. So I'm going to get out of here. And switch on over here. And just want to kind of orient you really quick to what's going on here in, in, uh, in Jira. So, so whether you prefer to look at it like a Kanban board or um, uh, whether you're more used to sort of uh, looking at kind of a list of items in a sprint or whatever, you know, this is, this is Jira, right? And you can see at a glance here that where we're at is that we're doing this um, it's the onboarding version two, uh, sprint number one. And over here, we can see the things that are done, which we've built and tested um, a recommendation service that's going to be surfaced onboarding. 
um, uh, live tail of the user's data as they're onboarding, adding their gravatar to the onboarding, having some customer quotes like in a carousel during onboarding, and having this new branding experience. All these things have been built and tested by, by the individual teams, right? And if I drill into one of those, this recommendation service, um, we can see that you know this controls whether to expose the recommendations in the V2 flow, and it is released by way of a flag called uh, 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 front end onboarding V2 add recommendations, right? Um, I wanna go back to this one though, which is the thing that's not done yet, which is the, the release the onboarding flow. And what we've got here is what, what, what I'm calling a parent flag, which is we're gonna actually roll out all five of these features to a population of 5% of the users and, they're, and it's going to be the same population. We're, we only we only want you know people to get all the, piece, the these canary people. These five percent are going to get just the experience uh, of the new experience. The rest of people are going to see the the regular thing. And that, so the plan is right here: roll out to five percent as a canary. Um, you know, all modules have bug snag coverage. So let's keep an eye out for early issues. After the canary, we could go to twenty five percent and make sure scalability looks okay. Maybe then we would go to a fifty percent to run a two week test to make sure that the new onboarding actually influences the business objectives. And that's really the kind of stuff we'll talk about in the second webinar about, about having events in four metrics. And then after A-B test, we'll review results and make the plan to address issues if found to go to 1%, right? So um, what I want to do is let's drill into this, this parent flag. And we can see that now in JIRA, when it says status is on, what that's telling you is that the, is the ability for the flag to control the release is on, but the actual details of the rollout will be here, right? And we can see that right now that parent flag is 100% off. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into split here. And I can see, just kind of show you what's going on here. This parent flag has an on state and an on off state, and we've given them descriptions, right? Um, and the default rule for this is off. So everybody's getting off, right? Now, if I go in here and I say I want to assign this to 5% be on, right? Um, this is going to say, let's start rolling out the release. Now, before I do that, I want to just quickly kind of show you how this is going to work, which is if I, if I go into the add recommendations here, we can see that this guy has an on and off state. And we've been testing in production, so the dev team have been able to see the on state for some time now. Um, and then there's this targeting rule down here that says, if the user's in the split parent flag and its treatment is set to on, then serve on. So this is sort of lying in wait here where the dev team is able to use it all the time and the real world, the users are going to see it if they're in a split where the parent flag is set to on, right? And otherwise the default is off, right? So let's go back to the parent flag. And um, I am going to uh, set the default rule, as I said, to 5% on. And uh, let's, uh, let's see if anything happens, shall we? So when I go to review changes, I get a diff that shows me what I'm changing and I put in a title here, ready, ready to roll out to, okay, and I will say that we're now ramping and I'll save it. And as I do that, uh, we're now rolling out, um, and I think what we're going to find, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and let uh, Yvonne take it from here. Yes, Dave, we, we do have a problem. I'm getting some Slack notifications on my end, so sharing my screen here, you all can see just a simple kind of Slack in the browser. Um, I set up a channel called New Feature Bugs, and using bug snags, alerting and workflow engine, um, we let you do things like subscribe to alerts based on a set of rules. One of them was, hey, do any of our new features introduce new bugs that we haven't seen before? And that was triggered. So you'll see we got this, you know, about one minute ago. It's letting me know that there's a new error in the onboarding flow. So if I'm sitting in the seat, I get this alert. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is click into it and see where this error is coming from. Um, at this point, it's kind of my responsibility to determine the root cause, figure out what kinds of actions we want to take. Um, if I refresh my page here, you'll see we started with 400 uh, events 
affecting eight, eight users. Now we have 524. So there's continued customer pain here. This is continuing to affect more and more people. So I need to kind of make some quick decisions. Um, in a normal kind of environment of bug snag, there's tons of summary charts and tons of data to show you different patterns. In this case, in, in our Sleep Better project, we're just trying to figure out which feature flag might be causing problems. And if I look, here's a feature flag. It's the FE uh, onboarding V2 ad Rex. It's on. That doesn't necessarily tell me that, hey, this is the, the root cause of the issue. But if I hop into our features dashboard, this is actually very useful where I can go into this specific feature. And the one thing that I'm looking at is, is this an exclusive error? So this is kind of the, the game changing bit of bug snag and split together is you can always attach metadata. You can always understand, hey, are these flags on or off? The thing that's really, really unique about bug snag is from working with our customers, we've kind of listened to them. They've told us, hey, we need to know what errors are exclusive to a feature or a specific treatment or a specific variant. So when you see this in bug snag, it means that this is an error that's only occurred when this feature was on and it's never been seen uh, when it's been inactive. So that gives us a pretty clear signal. Hey, this is a problem. We need to turn this off. Um, so you'll notice we've got the two variants. What I need to do is make sure that nobody else is affected by this. We've affected 930 sessions so far. Um, so at this point, I'm pretty confident I can hop into split. I can kill this feature. And once I've done that, I should expect that pain to subside. So uh, going back to this error, the best place to kind of validate that would be the timeline view. I'm gonna look at the last hour here. And after making that simple change in split, I can already see less pain for our end users. Um, I'm expecting this pretty much to be kind of at the floor now. So we had a peak of 480 event events in a one minute time span. And now that's dropping and will eventually hit zero. So at this point, I've kind of solved my problem. There's no more customer pain. And this is where, from a workflow flow perspective, I hand it off to engineering. I hand it off to somebody like Dave to kind of take the next steps from here. Awesome. Thank you so much. Get back to my share button here. Um, and here we go. So it literally happened that fast, right? I, I, we missed the knock brush sound, but, but you know, I, I, I turned it on and uh, basically air started flowing in right away. And um, I think a couple of things to note, first of all, is that, is that if I look over in my, in my team, um, I indeed have um, got an error given to me from Bugsnag that, that was opened up as a bug in my project um, because of, of, of that happening. That, that wasn't something that Yvonne chose to send me. That wasn't something somebody sent as a, as a you know, typed it in. That literally this was, uh, just flew in here uh, at the moment that we started getting trouble and that, that Bugsnag observed it, right? And that was due to some really straightforward integration on their side. Um, and now that we've, but remember, we've, we've stopped the bleeding, right? We stopped the pain. Um, and and um, what I want to do is this recommendation flow is this is this is the one that we determined was the issue, right? Um, and I, there's an interesting little tidbit here. You know, it says here yesterday tested it before our on-site stand-up today. We we're good to go. And uh, um, we're going to do some research on why it seemed to work when they were in the building, but why it's not working for our customers. So what I want to do is I want to go um, into split, and we'll see that this flag is killed because another member of the team did that, it's killed and it has the ability to restore it. But instead of restoring it, what I wanna do is I wanna try something different. I wanna do some internal testing um, and I wanna come down here and um, you'll notice that the dev team rangers have access to this, but I wanna be able to, to uh, uh, take this live without the uh, parent flag controlling what happens. And I could either delete this guy or I could just change this to be off so that even if that is on and you're still not going to get it. And what I'm doing here is, is I'm actually setting up a situation where we're going to basically turn this back on in production, but just for the dev team and everybody else will have it off. And uh, as a result, um, no users are being hurt, but 
we can now do a low stress shakeout of what's really going on. And, and, and I mentioned that clue, which was that the testing seemed to work fine um, in the building. Um, and what happens, we have a little chatter that happens, we realize that the, the endpoint that the recommendation service was calling had been uh, set to only allow traffic within the local network. Um, and the sort of like the API gateway or whatever wasn't allowing external traffic to hit it. Uh, they realized that was an oversight, um, something figured out now, maybe we're into five, 10 minutes at the most. Um, and they flipped that, that back. Um, and uh, it now has the ability to, um, uh, to be reached from outside. And so after we've done that, that testing, so we can go back in here um, and, um, we can say, you know what, um, I'm going to re-engage this with the rollout. And the beauty here is it's it's still going to go to just that 5% that's in that, that partial rollout, right? And so I'm going to switch this back to on. I'm going to save that. And we'll switch this to ramping again. And we're back in business. Now that could have been done in minutes like we did it, or that could have been something that you took, you know, that you waited until the next day if you really, you know, if you had something else that had to be done, then there, there was no urgency, there was no fire burning, you know, um, 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 uh, that we had to deal with because we were able to kind of systematically kind of snuff out the one little thing that was going on um, and, and kind of move, move on uh, with our life, right? And so um, if I come back here, um, um, now we're in that 5% rollout. Let's say everything goes fine. And uh, um, uh, I wanted to show you another thing about the integration. So, you know, we're in here and we have this nice little li nice little linkage, right? And we can see it's 95% off. Um, if, if, we, if we decide everything is fine, we can go to 100%, right? I'm over here. You know, we might stop a few points on the way. I mentioned we might do some other kinds of testing, but let's just for, for, for giggles here, say we're going to go to 100% and review that and, and save it. And actually, I can change the status on that to actually show that, uh, that we're 100% released, right? Um, and that kind of leads us back over here to Jira, where we can just move this over to done. Now, what's kind of fun is that once I've moved that over to done, if I go into split and I look at the parent flag and I look to the additional settings here, we can see that not only is there a link there, but we now can see that the issue is done. So that literally just got switched um, when I dragged it over to the done column. Um, Everything's flowing to each other. There's bi-directional connectivity. Everything just works 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 really well that way. So uh, I'm going to pause for a second here and take a look at the Q and A. Um, and yes, yeah, so uh, one of one of our our uh, attendees asked, "Didn't Ivan already stop the bleeding by turning it off?" Yeah, absolutely. He did. He did stop the bleeding as soon as he did his triage. He went in and killed the one feature flag that was causing the issue, um, and um, he did kill it. And then we, uh, we, but we wanted to actually um, turn it on just for the dev team so they could shake it out what was going on, right? Um, and uh, and so I hope that clarifies that question. Uh, I think we had. Let me see another question. Um, so I had a question, what is the uh, performance impact of using split since I'm using the SDK at, at a runtime, we'll need to determine whether or not the user has access to a set of features. So this is really two questions. Um, uh, one of them is, uh, what's the impact of you know, my app of having you know, split in there? And, and I think what's kind of unwritten here is like, is there a network delay while the, while the uh, well, the question, well, the way you're resolving whether the person should get this this feature or not, and actually, the beauty of split is the the SDK is in your app. Um, when your app initializes, uh, it loads the rules, and the decision is made locally in memory. So when when the logic comes through and says, "Should I show them the on or should I show them the off?" the decision is made instantly in memory, and there's no network traffic to make that decision. Right. 
Um, there's never traffic after the fact to, to sort of dribble out a little audit trail that says, we call it an impression that says this user got this experience because of this rule, right? But there is, there's, no, um, there's no delay, there's no latency involved because the decision's happening in memory. And the, the SDK was built that way really for two reasons. One was to be fast, but also to be very secure. So in, in cases where you have to send um, the questions effectively out to the internet to get a resolution to, to decide what the which flag you should get, you could be exposing PII. And many solutions do. They send the PII up, up to a CDN node and then the decision comes back. In our case, the PII never has to leave the split SDK in your app because the decisions are made right there in memory, right? Um, and then um, let's see. Uh, Yvonne, there's one here you might be able to help with was, um, can I relate more than one JIRA project to one app or service in bug snag? Yeah, I can take that one. I actually, I think it might be helpful to, to kind of share my screen and just show a couple of things there. Um, I know that during the live demo bit, you know, we're scrambling, we're trying to stop the bleeding, but there's a lot of magic that's kind of happening, which is how does the Slack bit work? How does the JIRA bit work? Um, so I just thought it'd be helpful for everybody to get a quick intro into that. So you'll notice here, we're looking back at the Sleep Better project. Um, one of the nice things about Bugsnag is the ability to create what are called bookmarks. Think of bookmarks as a bookmark. It's a saved search that you can revisit. Um, the value is that that's kind of the source of truth for your workflow automations, for your alerting automations, for your dashboarding. So you'll see feature ad recs here. And that's what we turned on. That's what causes problems. If I look in my overview dashboard, I've added a widget for this. I can see that spike. I can see that it dropped. Um, and then from an integration perspective, Bugsnag supports any number of alerting integrations, whether that be to the same channel, to different channels within Slack. Um, some folks may have teams that were part of the team, or maybe the Infra team works on Microsoft Teams. Maybe the client team works on Slack. We support any n number of integrations there. And these integrations also accept the bookmarks that you set up. So I have my AdRex bookmark here. That's what's routing things to the right people. And then this is also how the workflow bit works. So from a JIRA perspective, to answer the question that came through in the Q&A, we understand that now teams are kind of as distributed as ever. There's a lot of Scrum teams that might be contributing to one repo and therefore have their different Kanban boards, they have their different project keys. Um, so now we have support for any number of JIRA integrations, any number of whatever combination of integrations you would like to have. So that, just to answer your question, yep, as many as you'd like. Uh, and then you'll notice we're creating an issue for each new error that's related to the add Rex feature that we turned on. So that bookmark reappears here. And then some of the cool bi-directional syncing bits are, are configured here as well. So pretty easy to set up. And the nice thing is you have that bookmark, which will have a cascading effect. So if a new feature is added that you want automations around, you just add that at the bookmark level and that's gonna update all of your alerts. That's gonna update your JIRA. Um, so some cool integrations there that I just wanted to make sure the audience was aware of. Hopefully that answers the, the question. It does. Um, and. Um... The I got another one here. Um, is there a way to export any of this data if we want to pass it along to our, our BI teams uh, to run intelligence on what types of releases or features tend to cause issues for our customers? Um, that is a, that is a, a great question, which is the 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 information about who got what and when is what we call an impression, and absolutely that is uh, indeed exportable. And if I look back to the slide I showed at the beginning here. Um, uh, whoops, I'm not sharing my desktop yet. I'm, let's do that. That would make life a little easier for you. Um, so this slide I showed at the beginning here, um, where it shows uh, downstream feature context. So this is literally the impressions flow that's flying flying out. So income, the decisions are made, and um, you can share that stuff in again in real time to any other system. Um, or download it in batches if you prefer. Um, but that is how people can use feature flag data to inform other, other systems they've got internally, right? But support teams love it too. Um, so 
Uh, you know, on, on the, the one of the questions that came up, I think there was a confusion about so when when we killed the flag, like this is this is the let's go back to the ad recommendations flag. When this flag got killed, when Yvonne killed this flag, some somebody was paying attention said, but wait a minute, it still says the dev team is set on here, right? And the thing about a flag that's in a kill state, and I'll I'll do this again just so you can see what happens. When it's in the kill state, what it does is it freezes the configuration, but directs everybody to, so it says it's it's killed, and you've got the restore button there. When it's killed, everything here is frozen, but all the users are going to get the default treatment, right? If a split is killed or user is not included in the allocation, serve this default treatment. So even though the dev team had individual targeting on here, while that split was in the killed state, they weren't going to get it either. And remember, the first thing we did when we knew this was the problem was we just killed it, froze the configuration, killed it, turned off the, the pain, and then did some research. And after we were, did the research, we thought, well, you know, we got to try some testing in prod. And that's when we basically um, uh, uh, made the, the change to actually uh, take it out of the rotation for this. Um, and when we did that and saved that, notice the top here, status, We'll be, we'll be getting rid of a killed status and go into an active status. Um, I love these colored diffs. It's, it's pretty straightforward. And at, for the moment now, we're, we're going to basically, the parent flag is going to not matter. It's going to hover some off. And, and, and there we go. So in this point, this was when we went to internal testing, right? So hopefully that clarifies that confusion about, uh, but a good reading. Basically, the, the way split is meant to be read from the top to the bottom. So you, you kind of work your way down. If you're individually targeted, you get resolved, you're out of the rule set. If you're, if there's a charting rule that applies to you, it applies to you. If not, you keep going down and you get hit on the default rule. And the default rule would either be something like a hard off or it would be a percentage split, right? And then if the thing ever gets killed, um, you'd be served the off. Hope that that clarifies that. Let me see if I got any more Q&A left here. And, and I, I, I got a confirmation that we definitely answered that question. Thank you, that's awesome. So, uh, Let's jump back to the polls because I think I actually left out this one, which I want to launch real quick, which is just, you know, which solutions you're already using. Some people came here because they're split customers. Some people came here because they're Bugsmag customers. Some people came here because they use Jira and the nice folks at Atlassian gave a shout out about this webinar we were doing. So just give us a chance to know kind of um, uh, which solutions you're already using as you come in. That'd be great. Um, and um, I'll leave it up there for another couple seconds here, and then um, we'll go into some wind-up polls, and then uh, uh, the uh, give you back part of your day. So, um, why don't we get one, a couple more people to answer, and and then uh, and I'll close it out in five, four, three, two, one. All right, awesome. Um, boom. Okay, one more question. Um, we we do plan to have another webinar uh, to cover the inbound integration from Bugsnag to Split, which is really if Bugsnag is gathering uh, errors and uh, uh, and those can be events that can inform the metrics to we understand how well are we treating our customers. You know, Split Split's platform automatically calculates the impact of every metric upon every so every flag and every metric. So when you roll something out. All of the metrics you care about are compared for that particular uh, flag to know whether there's it's influencing those metrics and having the error uh, errors flow in as events empowers you to just plug that right in and have that data um, ready and handy to go. Um, thank you for your answers there. Um, anybody else want to quickly answer? I got a couple seconds here and then uh, we'll wrap this up. Um, awesome. So then the last question is just anybody who does want to raise their hand, if you do want somebody to reach out um, from either uh, Split or Bugsnag, just go ahead and tick one of those boxes and we'll make sure somebody does follow up with you. Um, I'm sure we'll send a recording out. Um, you could also use that as a jumping off point um, when you get the recording. So I want to thank you for your time. And um, on that note, I think we're going to jump back in here and I will, uh, um, for those of you who are curious about the split JIRA integration, um, I will put this in the chat really quick here. 
Uh, this is a just everyone. On. This is a YouTube uh, video uh, from a demo we did of Split and Jira integrated. This jumps you right to the point where you see us creating flags and linking flags to existing Jira items. So if you want to see how one would create a flag from right within Jira once the Split Jira integrations up um, or associating flags, you can just jump to that link on YouTube and that will do it for you. Um, any uh, any final thoughts, Yvonne? No final thoughts for me. Thank you, everybody, so much for joining and for the time. Yeah, it's great to have you guys all here. And uh, if you're watching this on the recording, I hope this helps you kind of get a clearer sense of, you know, the key was, you know, maybe you didn't see some of the behind the scenes, which was that that the prep work for this was just to have to know which teams are working on what flags. And so Yvonne basically uh, taught Bugsnag, hey, these flags belong to these teams. And when the flag came through that was the cause of an error, um, that team got notified, right? And so really keeping this straightforward and kind of a consistent language we're using to kind of explain what's happening and, you know, uh, the linkage is all pretty straightforward. So um, I can't wait to see what people do with just kind of streamlining their life so that you can spend more time doing the fun stuff. And uh, that was why I named my demo project Sleep Better, which is that we really think that the, you know, you can release, you know, what a release to actually not have to have it be kind of a big stress fest. Have a great day. Enjoy the rest of your week. Thanks all for being here. Cheers.